weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Yeah, my God will never fail. Let's declare it. Oh, my God will never fail. Cause I'm gonna see you.
excited to uh, introduce our, our guests this morning. Um, this, is a, this is one of those God things, I think, that God does. How many, have ever, how many have ever just recognized that God is in the midst of something while you're in the midst of something that you're doing, and you'll, you suddenly realize that, hey, wait a second, maybe God is in the midst of this. And that's kind of the way it's been for me and uh, a couple of my friends uh, that have gone out to Sisseton, South Dakota, and, and actually helped uh, work on a, a church for Pastor Joe's dad, uh, who's a pastor in, in, in Sisseton, which is kind of a, a reservation area, uh, and it's a cool thing they have going there in Sisseton, where, there's the, where the whites and the Native Americans are kind of really figuring it out how to live together. I know they have some issues probably, but it seems like there's a really good feel there. Anyway, so I went out there a couple times to help, or one time to help on the house, and another time uh, to go pheasant hunting. We got to meet Joe's dad, and he loves to hunt, and so he says, come on out, we can pheasant hunt around here, and had some great times pheasant hunting, and then uh, one evening, they had us over for dinner, and we met Joe and his wife and, and kids, and uh, he shared with us some of the things that were happening among the Native people in the United States and in that area. And uh, it's just one of those times where you recognize that, okay, this is not about hunting. God is in this thing, you know, and God is building a relationship in order to further his kingdom or to do something or somehow, somehow we get to be connected with people that are you know, some engaged in the harvest fields of the world. And uh, it's just so cool when God does stuff like that, I think, because you sense that God is in it. And uh, every time I try to tell somebody about you guys, Joe, I get teared up and I get this, I don't even, I'm not even saying anything serious. I just, when I start talking about you, I get, I get teared up and I can't help but begin to cry and my spirit begins to weep. And it's like I feel something in the in the heavens you know something in the heavenly realm in the spiritual realm that there's a deeper connection between us or or in what god is doing and so you sense that you know that's it's just not it's just not some, a friend that is going to come but there's something that the kingdom wants to advance and it i have the feeling it involves you people here today you know and i always wish more people were here or some people that aren't here or where are they at or even some of my own family you know and it's like I want him to be here because God is doing something. God is about to birth something, amen? And you get to be part of it. And, and I think it has to do with much deeper things than we think of on the surface. It's like, oh, good, we get to hear somebody talk about what God is doing, you know, among the native people. And no, God is doing something way bigger than we can even ask or imagine or, or you know, figure out. And so he's usually way ahead of us. And so it's our job to catch up. To with what God is laying out in heaven and what his plan is to bring to earth because guess what we're the ones who get to carry it out and so I want you to really have your ears open this morning and have your hearts open and and just be open to what the spirit would say to you this morning through these brothers because I think he has something that he wants to impart and it may it may not just be today it may be a future thing we don't know amen so let's just pray about that and just ask God to do what he wants to do this morning. Lord, we thank you that you are you're, you're, you're the ever-present one. God, that you were, you were here before we got here. Lord, that you're ahead of us and you're behind us and you surround us. And so we thank you for your favor. We thank you for uh, soft, gentle ears this morning to hear what you're saying, Lord. Open ears. Lord, we thank you for open hearts to grab a hold of what the Spirit wants to say and and Lord, help us catch up to what you're doing and already on the move with. And we, we give you glory. We pray for an anointing to hear, an anointing to speak for our brothers this morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love for each one here. And God, uh, I pray that our hearts would somehow be exposed to you this morning. Lord, that our hearts would be dealt with in some, some way, Lord, that would change us, would soften us, would help us to do more kingdom work and to be more in tune with the kingdom and your work is always going on lord you're always doing something and we thank you for it thank you for what you're going to do here today we give you glory in jesus name so joe I'll, pastor joe i'll ask you to come and you can introduce raymond and uh or however you want to do it um when we my name is joe and i'll need you to stay up here pastor 
when we go into a place, one of the customs of this land is that you offer a gift. It's a way of humbling yourself. It's a way of opening a door to new relationship. And usually you pray about what the gift is because it has a prophetic purpose. So everything you just said was, I believe, a picture of this. So it's the, the Washington Mall there, the Washington Monument, with the sword of God coming down through it. And it has uh, some Native American feathers. And this was uh, a gathering that happened, I think, four years ago, where there was a remnant from all the tribes in the United States who went there to intercede on behalf of the nation. And they released forgiveness for the first time publicly for a nation that's never apologized for the atrocities that it's done. And so it's a move of God. And that's the gift of what you as a body, as a body are participating in. And, and so I believe it's getting back to the heart of God. What he originally intended for this land is coming to pass now. So it's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I was thinking this morning, too, that, you know, there's no way that I can pay back these guys for what happened to them so many years ago. But I can say that I do apologize, and I deeply am sorry for whatever my forefathers or whatever our people did to your people. And uh, it grieves my heart to think about it, and I'm truly sorry. I repent on behalf of my forefathers and behalf of this nation, we grieve and we're sorry for what happened. We love you guys. So, Father, I just respond right now. We all respond. Lord, in every bloodline, every culture, Lord, even the, the, the darkness that the, the tribes were a part of, Every covenant that's been made in this land that has not been a covenant from you. Father, we're believing now at this time in history, Lord, that you will break the powers of darkness over this nation, Father God. You will break the powers of witchcraft and sorcery and evil and wickedness, Lord, in heavenly, in the high places over this land, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. It's not about who did things wrong, but Lord God, I just thank you. I receive that before your throne right now, that you would bring healing to this land, even through what pastor said, Lord. And I, I repent on behalf of my forefathers, my European side, my native side. And Father, I just come before you, Lord God, and anything that's, that's holding on, that's remaining, that's allowing this evil to operate, Father, we ask that you deal with it in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, that you bring revival, you visit all of us. Because from one man, you created all the nations. And we're coming back to that one purpose, and that's in Almighty God, the kingdom of God, where we're citizens of heaven. Father, that you've made, you, you've made us to be above all of the other uh, identities and backgrounds, but to belong to you, Lord. And, and that's so powerful. And so we come to that place together in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Amen. So, I, I just, uh, I've been a part of a lot of different things that have been happening. Um, uh, I just wanted Raymond to, to share a little bit, but one of the things that the Lord called me to do early on was to go to Europe. So I studied in Brussels, Belgium. I got my master's degree in theology, and uh, a kid from the reservation going to Belgium, living in an international community. And the Lord really taught me a lot through that. But one of the things he was teaching me is, how are we going to reach the tribes of North America? You know, and the statistics are probably less than 5% are Christian, and probably maybe like point some percent are born-again Christian. Because uh, the government of the United States assigned missionizing organizations to be federal agents. And now they were used to be a part of the assimilation process. And so there was a guy named uh, Captain Pratt, and, when, and they decided to assimilate the natives using forced re-education camps. And so what they did was they took all the kids from the Dakotas and the Minnesota area, and especially the, the chiefs and the leaders, and they sent their children over 
to the East Coast so that they were separated from their family. And their, the, the slogan was that this Pratt created was, we'll kill the Indian and save the man. So they didn't, the goal was not to have any identifiable Native people left, but they also didn't want to totally just slaughter the Natives. So we're, we're dealing with a lot of these issues now. Um, but God is bringing so much healing, you know, and, and he's just he's doing so much amazing things. And so one of the things that I'm, I'm heavily involved with is bringing the Native people together with the rest of the body of Christ. Because we, we can't be separate anymore. God, that wasn't God's intention. There were many missionaries and many immigrants who had the right heart, who had the right intentions for the Native people, who were moving with the plan of God. And that's happened all the way throughout. But there was, there was other, other parts and aspects like the federal government and stuff that seen the Natives as a problem. But you know what? God is bigger than all the atrocities. That blood that he shed on Calvary is, is a blood that speaks better than the blood of murder, than any other thing. And we have, to, we're, we have to come to a place, and we're coming to a place now in the body of Christ where racial barriers can no longer stand, where, where, where we have to come into such a place of maturity that, that we see ourselves as citizens of the kingdom first, and then our other identities second. So my tribe, you know, what happened with my tribe is we got moved from the Wisconsin area, Mille Lacs area, that was where their original homeland was, and uh, we got moved all the way over to where we are in Sisseton, South Dakota now. And so this land here was all a ter territorial, uh, a lot of the, um, the Ojibwe, where Terrain is Ojibwe, and the, um, and the Sioux people, this was, this was we, we were... We were hunting and fishing these lands, so it's just amazing. It's, it's like a homecoming coming back here. And so God is doing amazing things. So I work a lot in a lot of spaces that are dealing with reconciliation, um, not only just in the church, but when we're dealing with governmental issues, I'll, I'll usually go in and help bring reconciliation because he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's released to each and every one of us the anointing to reconcile things that are not of God, things where the enemy stolen our inheritance, to bring a reconciliation, to have our inheritance released back to us, to have sickness leave. He's, he's given us the ministry of reconciliation to go into our families and our bloodlines and see uh, people reconciled back to God, reconciled back to one another. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation to see nation upon nation come together into one purpose and one plan to, to get a hold of what heaven is doing. And so it's amazing, this ministry of reconciliation. And what I just have to tell you, our governor of South Dakota, I work with her as an intercessor. I'm, I, I've I gathered some, some of the native uh, leaders that are Christians and some of the non-native leaders that are Christians. I said, we have to intercede. In order for us to have authority over this land, we need to come together in unity and intercede over this land. And so, at first, it was a lot, of, a lot of repentance, you know, a lot of people were, you know, a lot of the Native people were, I'm sorry, I've been bitter at white people my whole life. And see, I'm half, so I get the best of both worlds. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and the non-Native people were like, my grandfather was a horrible racist, and he did this, and he hated Indians. And so we went through that whole phase, you know, of time. But now, after we've been walking together in relationship, those things don't, don't even matter anymore. We just come in, and there's such unity in the Spirit that the Holy Spirit just fills the room. You know, you ever feel it? I could feel that this morning. The Holy Spirit comes in. There's a, there's a change in the atmosphere when the Holy Spirit's moving. And so that's so powerful. And, uh, and so I'm going to do that for a little bit. But the other thing that the Lord started to work in me is a, is a discipleship strategy that will work with the tribal people of the land. Because the way that the tribes viewed the world is way different than the way that the West views the world. Our mindset is totally more focused on the reality of the supernatural than it is focused on the natural. So basically, the mindset that you grow up in with as a native person, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, 
is that it's the supernatural realm that controls everything in the natural realm. Therefore, we need to be connected to the spiritual realm in order to see the natural realm change. That's the mindset of all native people. So that's one thing is, is awesome is you don't have to try to convince them about the supernatural. It, 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 if, if something, if the Lord comes into that moment and starts to bring change, they're going to be aware that something spiritually is different. And so that's what's awesome about the way Paul taught us to minister. I didn't come to try to convince you with wise words, but I came to demonstrate to you. I, I didn't come to, to tell you about my God. I came to introduce you to a God that will come and make himself real to you. And that's amazing. And so this discipleship pro program, I, I used uh, Raymond as a test dummy. He's with me here. He's going to come up and share. Did you come up? Raymond. So the Lord had me given this strategy of discipleship, and, and a lot of it had to do with deliverance, because any, if you know anything about Native American, we go to some reservation where there's a 90% incest rate. Can you imagine that? Nine out of the ten people you walk by have been, have been sexually abused. And if you've ever dealt in ministry with just one person who's gone through that experience, I don't care what background they're from, it is a battle. So now imagine a whole congregation, you're pastoring a whole congregation where 90% of them have been abused in a very horrific way. Imagine the healing and deliverance that we... And that's one ministry that's never been focused on yet, is really that in, bringing healing and deliverance. Because when the Pentecostal and Charismatic movement went through the reservations, it was all about physical healing. Nobody got spiritually healed. It, no, no one's soul got dealt with. And so now we have a bunch of pastors who are focused on the supernatural, but there's so much anger, there's so much all these things, so much unhealthy ministry, that now the Lord at this time is releasing this uh, awesome thing. But Raymond here was part of uh, was our first one of our first graduates of our first class, and uh, I just want to say uh, I love my brother. He's from Canada. He's a full-blooded Ojibwe man. English is his second language, and you'll hear when he talks. And, uh, and what God, I believe Raymond is the symbol of the restoration of Native America. Because Raymond grew up in the old world before modernization came, and then he was the one that transitioned to the new. And now God is sending him back to his people to do amazing things. And uh, we're getting ready... So keep us in prayer. I believe that's one of the reasons we're here, because you are a body that intercedes. And we're going to need that intercessory prayer, because we're going on a, a large ministry tour this summer where we're just going to really bring the kingdom. We're going to demonstrate the kingdom. We're not going to talk about things anymore. We're going to see God do some things. So I just wanted Raymond to share whatever God put on his heart, uh, part of his story or testimony, and then I'll finish up. It's an honor. To be in front of you guys and we're all one brothers in the Lord and for me it's kind of funny what the Lord will do when he wants to move and the first thing he gave me was this guy <laughs> so for me time was a fractor because I know how to work I know how to do everything according to time so it was amazing to get out of that mindset what if we allowed God to come in here and I don't think any of us would want to go home so that is the power of God, if you really let him. It's amazing where I come from, how we're educated with time. And it's sad how is it going? And it's powerful. What if we let the Holy Spirit come in? and talk to us individually. And imagine this place, if he ever spoke, 
this house would be full. And I believe that because for me, I've toured many places, even across this nation, six times. And for me, I got locked up in uh, working with uh, alcohol and drug addicts in Minneapolis for two years. And I asked God, is that what you want me to do? I'm tired. I don't want to sit in the office. I don't want to do this. I want to discover my neighbors, what they look like, what they preach. So I ran into a, an old friend, and my tour began. I did uh, six tours across America. So I'm a runner, and I love to run. That's why I'm nice and skinny. <laughs> so on my first tour was the hardest because understanding how the, the body works and the, how the body functions. And on this road, why I asked the Lord, for me, the Lord has a sense of humor. And why am I killing myself out here in the desert? So, I asked him, Lord, why am I out here? And he looked. It was powerful for me. I literally got dropped on that road. And he said to me, it's not about you. And from there, man, the spirit just showed, revealed something to me. And that's the way I looked at it, no matter where I was going, no matter how dark it was. Don't be afraid. Just go. I'm with you. Wherever you go. So it was amazing for me. That's how I started looking at life, because no matter where I am, he's there with me. And I found comfort in that. Because I was in a, a love to drink and what comes with it. So I come from a, an alcoholic. My dad was a, a residential student. So he brought hell to our home. And we lived in hell with him. And half of the times when he got drunk, I didn't recognize my mom. And I asked her, why are we sticking around? Let's get out of here. I was mom's favorite. <laughs> so anyways, we, uh, she finally had the strength to do it and leave. And for me, at the age of 13, I left home. And then I asked my mom permission to leave. And she said, okay. I grew up in a cop world. So I was training to be a police officer. But fast money was, got the best of me because I grew up in a wealthy family and it poisoned my mind that I don't have to work. Raymond, they said, you know you got to work for life. They said, what's work? I don't want to work. I love this money. So anyways, when I became 16, I went to work. And my addiction got stronger and stronger. And I was just wrong with it. And I got locked up for a long time in my addiction. And from uh, 19 to 30, 
I never seen freedom. So I grew up in a system and that was, I don't blame anything for that because as an individual, we all have a choice. And I was blessed to go. No matter where I was, there was my white brother. I'm not racist. I never was. And here's my brother. Everywhere I went, he loved to talk. And he would give me books, and he would tell me stories about this, about that. No matter where I was, there he was. It's kind of funny to see it like that. And in the most horrible places we went, we survived together as brothers. So it's amazing what the Lord can do if you let him, if his spirit wants to do this. He will get his job done. And so a friend of mine wrote this book, and it's a warrior's circle of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And uh, they've been bugging me about it to write a, a story about my life, and uh, the tours that I've done. And this is the second copy. The original was kind of, you know, how humans get. I don't want to do this anymore. So she got to see how I lived in front of the spotlight, I like to say, and what I go through as a human being. And the most powerful thing about this book is I didn't want to write it. And I said, let the Holy Spirit talk. I didn't want to put a name on this and let's tell, uh, let's let the Holy Spirit tell a story about this person. And he did. And I have to go through a lot of, in a publishing world is there's a lot of, you can't go over somebody's title. So I had to research that, and the Lord gave me a, a what to use. Nobody's going to use this. So in many ways, I, I use the Lord to, uh, to direct my life, and it's not easy. What I admire about the, the elders in our church is to see what they've gone through because one day I'll be there too but to stay focused on Jesus of what he's doing in life and I've lost a lot of elder friends and to be with the Lord it excites me to know where they're at because the promise he made to them and the longer you walk with Jesus, the finer the road gets. It get, it's getting narrow and narrow. And you can see your sins before you, before you even make that decision. That's what's amazing about the Lord when you let him. And I, I'm not saying I'm a perfect person. I don't think anybody is until... He returns. So, for me, I like to say a prayer for all of us in my native tongue. Miigotch, Abminchang, Mamatsi, Ejibmian, Kitekitenga, Meitang. Kinashkan Kinigashkan, it a chak magabin de Ganach 
kebin pesin do ongech ane chigen chigwe tete mugwin ajiga i want to thank you lord for leading us by your holy spirit to direct us to the right decision to the right path towards you towards our father I want to thank you, Father, for giving us your Son, who shed his blood. Let us come to know this, how powerful to operate in this world by your Spirit. Thank you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Miigwech. So that's uh, Raymond. Basically, they did it. They transcribed the book. So the lady who wrote it actually just recorded everything he said and wrote it down and put it into a book format. So that's the story of his life there. I think you have some copies available, and he'll probably even give you a good discount. So if you're interested in that. Um, but could we just put the two scriptures up that I gave you? So this is a, this is a passage I wanted to talk about today. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, um, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives, uh, to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of man to dwell on all the face of the earth. And he has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Wow. Let's uh, look at the other passage as well. The Revelation. Revelation 7, 9, it says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. God, ha God has a desire and a plan for the nations. God created the United States of America, gave the boundaries for this great nation. God created the nations that are, that are sovereign nations within this nation. Over 500, and there's 574 sovereign tribal nations in, in the United States. There's over 600 sovereign tribal nations within Canada. So in North America, we have over 1,100 sovereign nations that God called by name and preordained their times, their boundaries, and he ensured that those tribes are existing today. So this is what, this is what I have both worlds in me. I, I'm, I'm a little bit French, German, Irish, and I'm also Ojibwe like what Raymond is. And um, I'm two different bands of, of the Sioux people. So the, I'm all mixed up. And uh, I grew up amongst, I grew up in both worlds. I grew up on a border town of a reservation. Um, and I was a part of that culture. And then I grew up in an all native uh, community, you know. So I've had the experience of both. But what the Lord was saying to me is, is the time we're living right now in this land is a very exciting and interesting time. It may seem like it's strange, but we know that if you do a little bit of study of history, that every time the church comes under persecution, revival breaks out. People come into the kingdom. And so this, this, this time should provoke a warrior spirit in us of no fear and full belief in God pushing forward for what he wants to do. Now is the time to go after those who we think are impossible to be saved. Now is the time for action. Now is the time to get into faith 
like never before. The Lord gave me a strategy going into this pandemic. He said, if you will wake up and you will speak to that virus, because it's a living organism, it's a virus, we know that most disease in the scripture was actually a demon or a spirit of infirmity. So we don't speak to it like, oh, you speak to it like it's a demon. In the name of Jesus, you have no authority over my household. You virus will not touch my children. You will not enter into our bodies, and you have no authority or right to come against us. And my wife was around COVID, people that had COVID over and over and over again for hours at a time, and she never contracted it once. Because the Lord wants us to walk supernaturally in our faith in a way where we, we step in the fullness of the kingdom authority and dominion that he's given us. And that's all people. And I love it. Because we're a part of an unshakable kingdom. We're part of a kingdom that is above all other kingdoms. We, 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 are, we are with the Most High God. It's powerful. So what I believe the Lord is doing at this time is he's bringing us to a place of unity in the body of Christ that we have not been yet. Because when we unify and become one in that way, where his th the things of God are more important, we will walk in the supernatural. We will walk in such an authority. And it's amazing. I'm getting to witness that in my state because um, a lot of you have heard the governor of South Dakota the Lord gave us a word a few years back that this would be a place of freedom for the nation. And that South Dakota would lead, lead a move of God and that he would give us a leader that would stand for the truth and stand for freedom. And then about three months before she was elected, the Lord told me to go and tell her that she would be elected as governor and God was going to use her to bring breakthrough at this time in history. So I told my friend that. My friend's like, I'm friends with her right now. I'll call her right now. She happened to be 20 miles away. She came over. I, we delivered the prophetic word to her, and the presence of God fell, and we all began to weep under the anointing of God. And it's powerful. And she was behind in the polls. She was behind. She didn't even look like she could, she could even close to win. There was a there was a very liberal minded guy who was a, um, who was a rancher and he had been paralyzed and he had gone to all the tribes because there's a lot of tribal people that he can get votes from and this guy was winning and his wife was meeting with a group of 20 women and they planned to turn South Dakota into what California is now that was that was their goal and so the intercessors the people that God uses begin to get together and begin to awaken. You know, I believe God, the visitations of God should be normal. I don't believe the Bible, that yes, the Bible talks about what revival is, but I think we can live in a level of revival. Not to say God's going to do the same thing every time or we're going to have this or have that, but as far as his presence go, you know. And um, <clears throat> so I just... I just wanted to share that with you, that God is doing some amazing things. Um, you know, we've been a part of seeing ministry where there's been, you know, mass deliverance. You know, in the crowd like this, we're, we're with Native youth. And uh, we're taking them through the renunciation of things of darkness, of witchcraft and evil. And all of a sudden, people will just be getting delivered of demons all in a whole, in a whole built room like this. You know, to see God move in that way, you know, where all the barriers are being broken down is so powerful. I just wanted to share with you a few of the elements of the discipleship process that I was talking about that have been so powerful. Because I believe that some of them carry over to any people group, you know, and can be beneficial. The first one was understanding praise and worship. He thought the, the, the worshipers will be excited about this one. Um, but the Lord, when I was in my uh, seminary process, the Lord took me to that passage that talks about he inhabits the praises of his people. So he took me on this journey to really study what does praise mean. And there's seven Hebrew words for praise. So 
If we want God to inhabit our praises and to inhabit our congregation, corporately our body, if we start to enter into this, we are going to see a move of the Spirit that's amazing. Because... There's a liberty and a freedom, but there's also a sacrifice when it comes to worship and praise. And we can enter into that sacrifice. It's so powerful. And I'll tell you a little bit of the testimonies this has brought to the people that we've discipled. But just let me read these real quick. Um, we have the first one is halal. To boast foolishly or to make, make a show of it. Thank you, Lord! I'm so proud of my God. He has done so much great thing. God is good in my life. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit begins to come down and inhabit that. To be indignant. You know, sometimes, you know, I understand we like to sit in our pew, and that's just not my style. But if we get outside of ourselves and begin to do things that the Lord, we think is foolish, but that the Lord is saying, I will inhabit that if you do it. And I'm telling you, this alone, this revelation about praise is alone has enough to bring deliverance and freedom and salvation without anybody even having to do anything. But it's him coming in our midst. That's so powerful. Let me get through these real quick. Thank you for your presence, Lord. There's someone... Uh, I was over here earlier, and the Lord was telling me he's going he's gonna to be healing the left hip of someone who's been... I was experiencing pain from my hip. It was going down to my left side. I don't know if it's the, the nerve in the back or what it is, but I just want to tell you that as an activation of faith, that I believe God is bringing healing to you. We don't need to do anything else about it. He's God. He can do it. But it's just a word of knowledge that he gave me that someone's going to be receiving healing in your left hip. So, Lord, we just thank you for releasing that. Zamar, to praise with instruments alone or voices alone. Do you mean to tell me when you get up here and you begin to hit that first key or strum that first note, the Holy Spirit comes through that? And begins to move in the room, begins to move in the territory, begins to move upon us? Yes. He inhabits that. Matter of fact, when God was going to do anything great in the word of God, he sent the worshipers out ahead. And they worshiped. And by the time they got there to fight the battle, the Lord had already, he had already won it. Because he uses sound to bring breakthrough. It's amazing. It's powerful. When we step into this, we understand you know what happens when we get out outside of ourselves and we do things? Because I, I grew up in a kind of a, I grew up in kind of a religious, really kind of religious-minded setting, you know, where everyone just kind of, you just be quiet. But when I began to get outside of myself and express myself through worship, it seemed like I got freer and freer. It's just something that happens that's so amazing. Hallelujah. Is a shouting for corporate praise, so we, we praise God with the shout. That's a war hoop from the Sioux. You mean to tell me when the devil's crouching in and all these things are happening, I can raise a shout to the Lord, and he can come in the midst of that shout, and he can chase the devil all the way back to Minneapolis. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Minneapolis is where my dad grew up. I don't have nothing against Minneapolis. It was just a joke. I heard a preacher say that. That's where I got that from, you know. But I think he was using Texas and Oklahoma, so just to be honest. It means to sing praise as one in harmony. So... You mean to tell me that when we harmonize, when we're coming together like, you know when the spirit is in something and we're harmonizing together, he's, he's coming in the midst of that. That's so powerful. 
And I want to tell you what this understanding, you know, there's, 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 a, there's a type of praise where you bow down before the Lord and you're quiet, like someone bowing before a king. There's a time for shouting and there's a time for dancing. And these are all things that God has told his people to do so that he can inhabit when they come together corporately. We know that raising our hands, reaching out to him, raising our hands, that's another form of praise. And um, it's awesome. Sometimes we, we get into this understanding, and you know, when it feels like something's spiritually dry, you know, corporately we feel that sometimes. We feel like sometimes, there's, it was a really hard morning this morning. We had a hard time breaking through, you know. But we break through because we continue to enter into his presence and do what he's asking us to do. But what this has done, like when, you know, to give a shout unto the Lord... What has happened with Native people is that when all of this happened, Native people shut down and kind of gone internally into themselves. There's a lot of shame. You know, you'll see a lot of people just walking around like, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no dignity left. And we would teach through this seven types of praise, and, and we, then we would practice them. And we say, we're going to practice this before you, God. We're going we're gonna to enter into this type of praise that you act as, asked us to do. And when the guys would do the shout unto the Lord, we say, we want you to give it everything you got. We want you to shout unto the Lord the best shout that you can possibly shout. You know what? They would get delivered by just doing that. You can keep them from not talking and, and, and being, being happy and being outside of themselves after that because the devil had locked them up. But that shout unto the Lord, somehow God came in and began to do something. You know, and, and, and I love my African brothers and sisters because you are the ones who taught me a lot. <laughs> and when I was in school over in Belgium, I got adopted by two brothers from two different nations. And they would take me down to that church, and I learned, I learned what deliverance was really all about. <laughs> It was amazing. And so the nations, you know, the nations have an impact upon other people and what God is doing. The other thing I wanted to say was a large part of what we did was focused on deliverance and inner healing. I think we're coming into a time and a space where we've had, a, just in America in general, we've had a lot of psychology in the church, which is good. I mean, it's good to focus on people's needs. But I believe where we went off track and where we're going to get back on track is this. Is my life no longer belongs to me. It's not I who live anymore. It's him who lives to me. It's not Jesus who died on a cross and lives to make me feel a certain way. It's that I surrender my life and I lay my life down so I can pick it back up. And we're coming to that place of desperation and hunger, I believe, where God is going to bust the rivers open of his spirit. So it's amazing what happens when you see someone's life transform right in front of you. By the Holy Spirit, we see people get set free that have a mental illness, that have been bound up their whole life, that have been addicted We've seen God do such a sovereign work. You know what? And what happens after someone's freed up, and this is why we focus on this in the discipleship process, is now they can hear clearly from God. Now they can release what God is telling them to do and move with God. But when someone has all that clutter, all that oppression, and all these things going on, they're fighting every day just to, just to make it through, let alone try to hear from God. But when he brings that freedom and that deliverance, it's like they're an open vessel for the glory of God and to see God move, you know. And we've seen such great success. One of the things that, that the Lord told me early on, he said, everything's going to be led by my spirit. And so I had the ability to set up a curriculum and set up a a format of education where we sat there and gave them a whole bunch of information, that's never worked with Native people. I want to tell you that. 
You could give them the information all day long, but that, that has never worked, and I don't believe it will ever work. Because the Lord began to teach me and reveal to me is this, is that the aspect of native culture that's really powerful is that we were taught that you don't talk to me about religion, you demonstrate to me what your God is all about. So if you can't show me, that means that you're just, you, just have, you just have something, but it's not nothing. There's no power. And we're taught from a young age that Christianity is a man-made religion. And that was made to subjugate us to the Western world. And that there's no power in it whatsoever. And they laugh about it. The medicine men, they laugh. There's no power in that. And it's crazy the way that you're indoctrinated into that and the way that these strongholds have a way to, to try to hold you, you captive. But when you encounter the Most High God, when you encounter the name that's above every name, the name that has authority over everything, man, you can't deny that. There's a difference between the spirits of witchcraft and the low-level power and the garbage that they represent to where you encounter the real thing, the real spirit of the living God. There is a big difference. And you will be drawn toward the spirit of life. Because the spirit of death requires sacrifice, requ will take everything from you. So the Lord told me, we're going to have a class. We're going to have our classes every day in our discipleship program. But we're going to wait on the spirit till the spirit gives us the direction. And the Holy Spirit is going to be in charge. So it was amazing. The format that we did was actually... We praised and worshiped and prayed through until we felt like the Spirit gave us a direction, and then we would teach from that. And God would accelerate the process of discipleship by, by so fast because he was hitting on the things that the people need, really needed, and, and the Holy Spirit was leading us in a direction. And what's crazy is guys that had come in that had only been saved for like a few days began to move in uh, oh, the gifts of the Spirit right away. There was no, there was no nothing. This, guy, this brother would say, this is what I hear the Lord saying to you. And this brother would say this. And it was a ministry of the body like I've never seen where they would begin to minister to one another. And it was, it, it's so powerful. And I believe that that's what God intended for the tribes. To be connected to the one true God through Jesus Christ. And to move with him in a way that God made them to move with him. And so it's, it's so powerful what's happening. And uh, um, we're going to be going out this, this summer and, and be going on another tour to some reservations. And uh, I just wanted to tell you, I, I got back recently from Florida, and God just poured out his spirit amongst the Seminole people. It was so amazing. Um, what we did was just, um, I was just telling them that, we are going to enter in and we're going to ask God to begin to move through all, all the people in the body. And we're going to enter in together as one people. And if the Lord speaks to you or wants you to get up and, and, and exercise the gifts of the Spirit he's put inside you, I want, well, we'll go ahead and do that. So we just went into a time of worship and praise. And every generation from a five-year-old kid all the way up until the elders start prophesied for the first time in a Baptist church. And they were speaking the utterances of the Spirit. And God was just pouring out his Spirit in such a powerful way. And I just believe we're, we're living in powerful, just amazing times. So 